This video will show you how to access work items in the integrated tracker and show you the different ways that you can browse and view them. When you're in a project and you want to browse your work items, you go in navigation here to the work items topic, which takes you into the integrated tracker. Let's understand what we're looking at here briefly. We have a table view of some subset of all the work items in the system. In this case, it's the unresolved work items, and it's the unresolved work items here in this project. I could change that and say, oh, I want to see the unresolved work items assigned to me, or the ones I created, or the ones that I need to approve. If I'm a manager, it might be interesting to see if there are any work items in the project that are unresolved and not assigned to somebody. Over here, I could change this and say, I want to see just the resolved ones, or I want to see everything. In this case, we're going to stick with the default here and we're going to see the unresolved work items in the project. There's a handy little thing over here in navigation that uh, you might want to know about. For instance, uh, I can isolate just my defects. Or if I'm a requirements engineer, maybe I want to isolate just the requirements in this project. Requirements often have something like uh, structure built into them and if I want to see that, there's a little tree mode that I can invoke here. As you can see, these work items here have like a parent-child relationship, and that's easy to see with the tree mode. Let's send back to our default view. By the way, you should know that what you see on your system over here in navigation, it might be completely different because work item types are fully configurable. This is just the default from one of our project templates, but uh, you can configure work item types to represent anything you want. So here in the top portion of the screen, this is where you select a work item that you want to work on or process, do something with. By the way, in the table, you can go over here and you can decide what columns you want to see in your table view. You can add some, delete some. You can save that as your own default or you can just keep it for this session. Let's give a little more room so we can zero in a little bit on the detail of the work item. Let's go to defects because there's fewer of them and a little bit easier to, to see what's going on. You'll notice I'm looking at what's called the light form with minimal fields. And that's the default from this template. You can change that. Notice I can reset the severity if I need to do that. Don't have to invoke an edit mode. I can just do that in place. The status field is your view into the workflow. In this case, the workflow configuration gives me these possible actions at this point in the process. I can start the progress, I can resolve the item, or I can resolve and close the item. Beyond that, in the light view, I just have the description and one custom field. Now, if I want, I can click up here and I can see everything that has to do with this work item, all the details. I can set the priority. I can set a due date that the uh, planning engine will, will pick up on. I can decide that this belongs to a time point, set a milestone for it. Um, I can estimate the item. How much time do I think this uh, is going to take to fix? And all that gets picked up by the uh, project planning engine, which is the subject really of a, another tutorial sometime. Comments is where you can uh, create threads to discuss this particular work item. We have a separate video on that. You might want to check that out. Uh, work records, if you work on this item at different times, you can log how much time you spend at different times. Um, linked revisions can be important. Uh, developers can use their um, IDE and uh, use commit comments to uh, cite the ID of this work item and then the revisions will automatically show up here. Linking work items is hugely important because that's what gives you your traceability. Uh, this is how you can manually link an item. You can pick uh, what kind of relationship this link has, the role of this link. Uh, these are configurable again uh, in the administration. So let's say I want to say this one relates to and I can go over here and pick uh, some item that this relates to. Uh, you can execute a query in that dialog to find exactly the item that you want. So we're not going to save this link in this case for now. I got my light view back when I did that. 
I'm going to go back to my detail view. What else is interesting for us to look at? Hyperlinks is where you can link this item to internal or external online resources. You can attach any kind of file that you might need to. If you have a voting program in place, you can vote for the item or you can revoke a vote that you've cast earlier. If there are people who should get notified about changes to this item who are not uh, the assignee or the author, you can add them as a watcher of the item. So that pretty much sums up the data fields in the work item form. Let's take a look at some of the other uh, page tabs that we have up here. If you have a license for Polarian ALM, you'll see the Live Plan tab here. And the Live Plan is generated by our project planning engine, and it shows you the current state of the project plan. Let me get out of the defects, and let's just show the plan for all of the work items. You can select a time scale, any place from a day to a week. We'll have to give you a separate uh, tutorial on actually how to read this if you're not really familiar with Gantt charts. What you can see quickly at a glance is who's involved in this project and who's got what assigned at what particular point in time. If there are details about a work item, you can mouse over it, see some of that. I can click on that to get the detail of that particular work item. Again, uh, we need to give you a separate tutorial on that. So let's switch over to the roadmap view. What you have here is your project milestones. You configure these in the administration, and you can select uh, some time point. In this case, we've got some iterations configured as milestones. So for this I-34 iteration, um, again, I'm going to see what unresolved items I have that are slated to be processed for this I-34 iteration. I have some user stories, some tasks, some defects. Multi-edit can be handy when you want to pull up either with a query. Query would be a separate video on that. Let's pull up a small subset like my defects here. Multi-edit just lets me invoke an editor and make changes on a small subset of work items without having to browse through the table and find each one of them individually. It can save you some time. I want to go back to my view of all unresolved work items before I go over here to the matrix tab. The matrix is available in ALM and this is where it's kind of like traceability central. This is where you can both view and manage traceability between different uh, work items. The matrix view you can kind of think of it as traceability central. This is where you can see what is linked to what. Now the view you see here is a little bit scary looking because it's pulling up all work items in the project, all the unresolved ones, and showing you what is linked to what. You would probably never do this. You would use these queries here and you would narrow down this uh, set maybe to just your requirements and test cases to see what's, uh, what's linked there. This is really the subject for a, another tutorial. What I'll just show you here is that you can get information about any link that you happen to find here, for instance. There's some detail about that one. You can generate uh, traceability reports from here. Uh, there's lots of things you can do. Again, as I say, we need to devote another video to that. Let's go over here and take a look then at our last view of work items, the timesheet view. The timesheet view is useful if you uh, have, for example, outside contractors and you need to track their time for billing purposes. This is where people can come in or a manager can go in and log uh, specific time worked on specific issues. Let's pull up our defects real quickly. So let's say maybe, for instance, on Wednesday I say I worked two hours and on Friday I worked one hour on this particular defect. When I save that, that gets logged and uh, people can generate reports from that and uh, do whatever is necessary with it. We hope this tutorial will help you get started using work items. If you have any comments or questions, please get in touch with us at info at polarian.com.